Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disneyland and Galaxy's Edge again. We actually haven't talked about Disneyland and Galaxy's Edge in a couple of weeks. I don't know. We talk about Disney a lot, but we, that's because that's the thing we cover. And they own everything. Yeah, that's true. So how can you not talk about Disney? Uh, we haven't talked specifically about Galaxy's Edge and Disneyland, though. I know in a couple of weeks they have opened Galaxy's Edge in Walt Disney World. We'll talk about that a little bit, but we really can't get a good feeling as to how successful or unsuccessful it is because this has been a weird week with the hurricane. Um, but uh, yeah, the pass holder blockout dates have been lifted and Disneyland is still a ghost town. Well, it's, school started too, but still. Yeah, but still, still, it's not a good look. So it's not packing them in like they thought it was going to. Um, we're going to talk about that in this video. Before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not subscribed yet, we hit, I think, 57,000-ish yeah, 57. subs this week. We're hoping for 100,000 by the end of the year. Don't know if it's possible, but if you could help us out, that would be greatly appreciated. We talk about pop culture. We give opinions on pop culture, uh, which covers everything. We cover Disney parks. We cover movies. We cover animation, anime, anything that interests us. Because actually, Video we, have, we have, like, like you know fingers in all those pies so. we have lots of fingers and lots of pies and I take that as you will take it as you will so this coming from WDW news today and it has been confirmed by other media outlets as well uh crowds remain low despite lifting of annual pass holder blockout dates across disneyland resort so remember how everybody was like galaxy's edge isn't a failure everybody's gonna come as soon as they lift the blockout mm -hmm. dates this is just it's that's just because of blockout dates Blockout dates, blockout dates, I don't think blockout that helped, dates. Though. I really don't think that helped. I don't think it helped, but um, yeah, so here we go. WW News Today. Despite Disneyland opening one of the most anticipated lands in modern history, crowds at Disneyland have remained below average. Even months after opening, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has failed to drive the needle. It hasn't moved the needle at Disneyland for reasons that seem to baffle management. <laughs> the fans understand why. Yeah. Disney's not listening. As of today, September 4th, all Disneyland pass holders can enter both Disneyland and California Adventure. This includes the cheapest Southern California Select, as well as the no longer sold Southern California Pass. This issue seems to have plagued all of Disneyland as attractions in both parks are seeing below average wait times for attractions. Uh, for example, Twitter user Haston, Haston noted that at 3 o'clock yesterday, the first of no pass holder blockouts, wait times were in single digits for some popular attractions. Check out this thread from uh, Haston about how low wait times are at Disneyland. Um, yes, yeah, so this guy's like, hey, today is D-Day for Galaxy's Edge. Park is open until midnight due to every pass being unblocked. First day SoCal, SoCal Select has been able to get into Disneyland since late June. Will it be crushed after work with locals? I don't think so. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. Management is clearly noticing the lack of crowds as Fantasmic at Disneyland is only being shown once per day. I love Fantasmic. Fantasmic. It's, it is so much better in Disneyland than it is at Disney World because they actually... Anyway, well, that's a whole nother... I didn't see the Disneyland one, so I don't know. Disneyland one's better. Uh, in addition, the dining package isn't even being offered, indicating low crowds trying to enter the park. Ooh. There's literally no one in line for Snow White's Scary Adventure. Well... Who cares? There were, quite a few people, <laughs> there were quite a few people in line for when you weren't there. You were actually at one of the media events, and I had the kids there, and we actually waited in line quite a while to get in Snow White. Really? I went through, now this was Christmas 2017. I was out covering uh, Christmas in Disneyland when we had the the, the other Disney blog, and uh, there was no wait time for that or Pinocchio. I walked on both, got video footage. and Yeah, but was that was in the morning when you had the extra time? Mm -hmm. No? Hmm. No, it was the Where, afternoon. Um, so Disneyland. Well, we went in summer and we had to wait. So yeah, in the summer it was busy. Well, that's what we said. You know, people were like, "Oh, this is normal." It's like, no, it's not. We were at Disneyland last year in late June, early July, and it was packed. It was like end of June, like mid. It was right before we had to do our one show, so it was. Yeah, it was. It was packed. Because remember, packed. we came home and you had to turn around and leave again. I had to go to Disney to World. To cover, yeah. cover Disney World. Yeah. So all those people were like, "You've never been." It's like, bitch, please. I have been to Disney parks three or four times in a month on different coasts mm -hmm. you have no idea anyway anyway disneyland may have initially meant to deter pass holders and guests from galaxy's edge to avoid overcrowding but seems to have a much larger domino effect 
by delaying rise of the resistance, guests are decided to avoid visiting the new land until they can experience both. I agree. I think that that was one of the biggest mistakes they made. Was I mean, the biggest mistake they made was basing it on the new trilogy and not on the the yeah. classic. I think classic was the safe bet. Should have done the classic. You could always put characters in from the new one, but I would have based in the classic. Mm -hmm. The second big mistake was the rise of the resistance not being open because they hurry wanted to hurry and get it open, hurry and get it open again on the books. Big mistake. Yeah, it actually blew up spectacularly. They they wanted to hurry up and get get the revenue on the books, but it actually had the opposite effect. It actually cost them money. Well, I totally agree with the next one too. I, I think this had a lot to do with it also. Controlled openings and forcing guests to purchase a hotel room to visit the land initially rubbed many pass holders the wrong way. Yeah, a lot of locals obviously don't stay at the hotels. Well, what they did, for those who don't know, was the first month the Galaxy's Edge was open, the only people that, they had like a lottery for some people to be able to get in, but for most people, the only people that were allowed to get in are people who already were booked a hotel stay at Disneyland. So you had to stay in one of the Disney-owned hotels. And the Disneyland hotels are not cheap. Oh, they're they don't have expensive. value hotel no. really. I mean, their no. value is the Pixar Pier one, uh, and it's not even a value. It's not a value hotel. So you were talking a lot of money to stay there, just to, that you're guaranteed access, but you had to stay in a hotel. And because of that, a lot of annual pa or annual pass holders are like, "What the hell?" Mm. Yeah. And people, well, people who book trips at other hotels weren't allowed either. Yeah, it it was ridiculous. I mean, it was just really poorly planned out. Uh, prices at on-site and off-site hotels have been raised for the anticipated crowds, which seem to have also deterred guests from visiting God, Disneyland. They raised them more. Yeah, remember? Well, I think they thought that this was going to draw people. And remember when Bob Iger said, "We don't need to advertise Galaxy's Edge opening. I just have to put a tweet out saying it's open, and it's going to open the floodgates, and the money's going to pour in." Mm-hmm. Well, Bob, the money didn't pour in. No. Uh, this is actually probably the worst case scenario for Disney. It actually hurt attendance. Right. Uh, and I, I don't think anybody expected that. I just think people are sick of Star Wars, too. I mean, that's not listed in the thing, but I think the fan backlash, people are being sick of it. Um, I, I just think people are getting tired of... And then guess why Disney, negative Disney stories are doing so well is because I think people are just tired of being told what they're going to eat because Disney says so. Yeah, I mean, Disney's like, it used to be Disney was like, what can we do better? What can we do to please yeah. you? And now Disney's like, we own everything, so you'll you'll eat it and you'll like it, bitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... it's. No, I'm talking like the higher up, uh, higher up people, because like the cast members and stuff don't act like that. I mean, you usually, most, most part, I mean, there are st stories that are bad. But for the most part, the cast members, the ones who aren't getting paid that much, are the ones who make your trip magical and are the ones that go out yeah. of their way to do kind, nice things. Those people are, deserve way more money than they're getting paid because they're the ones that actually give you the reputation that you're, you're happy about mm -hmm. having. It's not the stuff that people higher up are doing. I can tell you that much. Uh, yeah, uh, so this they're they're getting their kicks in here, uh, and again, WDW, I don't blame them. They have they have a right to be PO'd at Disney. I, I would, yeah. WDW News today. For those of you who haven't been following Clownfish TV, they are the fan site, the unbiased fan site that uh, the Disney Parks blog decided they would make an example of via their official channel by by not naming them specifically. Oh, it was clear who they were talking. But about. was very clear who they were talking about, which is so weird because they've been around for twelve years. Um, but they, they, they got to dig in at them for their rumors, but I would say the rumors are probably right 85% of the time. Sometimes things change, you know, mm. sometimes Disney changes their mind, but a lot of times the rumors have been correct or, or close to, uh, correct. And Disney decided they were going to throw shade at them, mm -hmm. and, which is a really, really bad look as a bad look for Disney to be attacking fan blogs that actually, are out there that should be uh, driving traffic to your parks. Well, something else that's interesting about WW News Today is if you go to their Twitter, for example, on Twitter, a lot of these blogs, uh, their traffic is not, ref they're, they're, the way people interact, interaction is not indicative of the traffic because they might say they have 60,000, 100,000 followers or whatever on Twitter and they get like two likes. And it's like, oh, hell no. But these guys, they have followers and they get the interaction to prove it. So they, you know, they are site fans listen to. And it probably was not a good thing to go in any of these fan sites, whether it be WWE Day or some of the other popular ones. I don't mm -hmm. think it's smart of Disney to throw shade at any of them, especially if their their numbers check out. They legitimately have these followers. You probably don't want to piss off the fandom. Yeah, and this is what happened with Star Wars, too. Disney tried to control... Star Wars fandom. Oh God, yeah. And you know there was blowback, and this is I think we're kind of seeing it now. This is a combination of like 
two storms colliding. No, you know, I'm not trying to make light of the, the Hurricane Dorian situation, but we have, you know, two uh, uh, PR disasters with Star Wars and with uh, the parks, and they're kind of combining into like a superstorm of, of uh, negative press for Disney because you have Star Wars fans that, you know, you don't have as many Star Wars fans, diehard fans, Disney, as you thought you did, clearly by the box office for Solo, the lack of toy sales, now the lack of interest in Galaxy's Edge, and the lack of interest in The Rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. People don't care. They care more about the Joker movie than they care about The and Rise it. of Skywalker. And it's it. The second it movie. Yo, Killer Clowns. You should have put, uh, you know, Darth Clownius or something in, no. in Rise of Skywalker. No, you would have gotten. But... Oh, they did. That's called Ryan Johnson. <laughs> oh, Darth Clownius. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. Um, yeah, the article gets a dig in at the end. Uh, so it said, will Galaxy's Edge ever draw the crowds many people expected like Harry Potter at Universal? No. Uh, or will it always remain a mild draw to Disneyland? I think we've already seen the answer to this. In any case, Disneyland is definitely suffering from a dearth of guests and is growing desperate. I agree. To draw in the crowds. It, well, I'll tell you what. When they were slamming on WW, WW News today about them being an unscrupulous or whatever blog and to get your official news from our blog... It's so funny. I'm telling you, if you go to the Disney Parks blog and you look at the latest stories, you can tell exactly what Disney thinks that they're weak in because that's what they hammer the flipping most. Yeah. Right now, it's Galaxy's Edge, Galaxy's Edge, Galaxy's Edge, Galaxy's Edge, Cruise Lines, Cruise Lines, Cruise Lines, Galaxy's Edge. Occasionally, Alani. Mostly Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, I think they've given up on Alani. Nobody wants to go to Alani. They need a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> so, at least, I love this though, at least Walt Disney World can blame Hurricane Dorian for not meeting quotas this quarter. Yeah, I mean, to be we the reason we aren't, we aren't going there with the Galaxy's Edge at Disney World is because it really wouldn't be fair of us to do so because there was a hurricane. And you can't make a fair assessment with the hurricane. Yeah, but even days before, and I will say this. Yeah, we will mention this. We are going to watch it. Now, days before, we had uh, two sets of friends mm -hmm. uh, go down on separate days to Galaxy's Edge. We had one set of friends go down on opening day. Mm -hmm. uh, they were actually in the park before. Oh, no, the other that's... person was on opening day, too. He, he yeah. got in later. He didn't think he was going to, and he got in. He got in. He got through line in less than an hour on opening day. It was around 5 or 6 o'clock, and uh, he wrote me and said, yeah, it was, you know, it, it was light. It was under an hour. Now, mm -hmm. he was going single rider, mm -hmm. but it was opening day, you know, and uh, we've heard this time and time again, even going to now, again, yeah, there's a hurricane. I get it. There's a hurricane. Yeah, that's why these um, are so low. I but mean, Flight of Passage currently... 45 minutes! Currently, Flight oh, of Passage... Oh, well, to be fair, it closes at 9 anyway. They're going to close the line at 9. So here's a little trick for you. If you're going to Disney World and you want to ride Flight of Passage, if you don't get there first thing in the morning, go within the last, like, 45 minutes before closing or so and get in line. Uh, what happens is, if you're in line by the time it closes, they have to let you go through anyway. And what they'll do is, they'll keep fast passes going until the park closes. And then they'll just let the regular standby line go, and you might wait 45 minutes or so, as opposed to waiting like two hours. Yeah. So, little tip, continue. Uh, yeah, but Flight of Passage actually had less of a wait time, or uh, actually had more of a wait time, sorry, than, than Smuggler's Run. <gasps> Yeah, we're talking opening week. I mean, this is unheard of oh, for Hagrid. Oh, this is open an extra hour. Yeah, it's open an extra hour, Ooh. too. So, clearly, the interest is not there. Now, again... Slinky Dog only has 25 minutes? Yeah, Slinky Dog's only 25 minutes. Usually, Slinky Dog's an hour plus. Dang. Uh, again, this is not a good indicator of how it's doing in Walt Disney World because there is a hurricane this week. Um, it's going to be weird, but we're going to watch it in the next couple weeks. And I have, I have a hunch that we're going to see maybe not as dire as Disneyland, but I think we're going to see very similar a very similar pattern here where Smuggler's Run is not going to be the hottest ticket in the park. I think that's probably going to go back to Flight of Passage, maybe Slinky Dog. Which is interesting because, uh, I bring this up, but that when Animal Kingdom opened Pandora, we were down there, uh, it was even like a year later, and we were talking to one of the uh, customer service people down there, and they were telling us that now Animal Kingdom at the time was still the number one park, beating out Magic Kingdom for attendance because of Pandora. Yeah. And now when they opened Toy Story Land, it did shift a little bit to Hollywood, but not much. Still, Pandora was still what the big draw, and they think they thought Star or Smuggler's Run and Star Wars was going to, you know, I don't think it's going to. I think it's still going to be uh, Animal Kingdom. I mean, uh, yeah, when they open Rise of the Resistance, but even then, I'm kind of like, we're hearing budget cuts. We're hearing... I it's better a, not. It depends on how the ride is. I mean, it, it's very possible that the ride opens and it's not as spectacular as, as yeah. people were hoping. Hey, Disney, if you're listening to this, which you probably are, um, 
do not make the cuts to that attraction. Do not make the cuts to Rise of the Resistance. If you want to save your ass, I would recommend you do not make those cuts. I'm just telling you. I know you're you're like, oh crap, money, money, money. Maybe you don't do so many damn Disney Plus shows yeah. uh, that aren't coming out for two years. And I would spend the money that you need to spend and listen to your Imagineers on the Rise of the Resistance attraction. I would agree with that. Um, if they had listened to the Imagineers, it would be original trilogy and mm -hmm. it would be impressive well, as hell. Can't do that. But if they tell you you need something to make it good, do what they tell you. Speaking of cuts, speaking of cuts, this is how you know that Disneyland is not in a good place right now. They are cutting entertainment. This happens with this happens with uh, Disney World too. When things get tight, the first ones to go are usually the live entertainment, yep. um, and they'll they'll shut down some. Uh, you know, attractions, uh, shows, and stuff like that. You know, they'll cut performers like they did with Rivers of Light. They cut mm -hmm. out the performers, and then eventually they just got rid of them all together. Um, Disney cancels live shows at Golden Horseshoe Saloon and Pixar Pier as entertainment cutbacks continue. So this is kind of sad because the Red Car News boys are actually pretty good. This. So who? Yeah, but who gets who gets hurt? Not the people that are high up that made the stupid decisions. The employees. The, the cast members who are the ones who actually make people want to come back. Let's cut them instead of cutting some of these dumbasses up high. Yeah. Now this is embarrassing because they made a big deal about the tale of the Lion King show mm -hmm. this summer. Great new show. Come well, they see did. The show. Was, they made a huge deal about this. And they're cutting it back. Oh, I didn't really catch on. That's what they're talking about. That yeah. new one. It yeah. It just opened. It just opened. The latest entertainment cancellations follow the closure of the red car newsboys are actually oh, really good. Oh, they're scaling back the tail. Yeah, of and scaling back of the tail of the okay, Lion King I was like, show. they just opened that. So, the Laughing Stock Company show, the Golden Horseshoe Saloon, and Pixar Monic Orchestra Band and Pixar Pier will end their runs on September 15th. Seasonal changes in entertainment are part of the normal course of business. Uh, and cast members may be scheduled in other areas of Disneyland. The latest entertainment cancellations follow the closure of the Red Car Newsboys show and the scaling back of Tale of the Lion King at Disney California Adventure. Light summer crowds at Disneyland following the opening of Star Wars Land on May 31st resulted in a 3% decline in attendance. Even the, the uh, OC registers blaming Star Wars. And, you know, here's the thing. And instead of like, you know, hey, let's, you know, wait it out. Let's maybe take some money away from the people that are high up making dumb decisions. No, no, we're going to cancel these things and probably raise the tickets on everybody else. Yep. Yeah, that's That'll exactly That'll be their answer. Uh, and they're having all kinds of sales now, too. They have like a 15% off hotel deal or something going on at Disneyland right now. Nobody gives a shit. Mm -mm. And, yeah, they just threw that out there, didn't they? Because yeah. they're flipping out. Well, yeah. And this is the thing. There's a lot of bad buzz. Um and it's, it's, you know, one, the prices have gone up astronomically in the last few years at mm -hmm. Disney because, again, the parks pay for everything else in the company, usually. So Arizona Central, which has been very critical of, of Disney parks lately, um, happiest place on earth? Uh, not exactly. Here's why Disneyland has lost its magic. Opinion. I agree with this opinion. Instead of packing people into the park like sardines, Disneyland should focus on making vacations unforgettable for the right reasons. I think Walt Disney World should focus on the same things because I told you guys before, if you listen to our videos, about how Walt Disney World with the parties, like the not so scary Halloween party, uh, yeah, you might not get an eight level crowd, but you might get a seven level crowd because, you know, they're going to. They, oh, you mentioned that? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Uh, he said, you know, this is not going into detail about the not so scary Halloween party, but he won't go into all the details of the unholy night that was not so scary Halloween party of 2015, but we were packed with a massive crowd in 100 degree heat, unable to move more than 10 feet at a time for nearly And you're an paying hour. for the honor of having a low, uh, like a, a much lower crowd amount at the park. That's what you're paying for. The Halloween events and the, the lower wait times, the, the smaller crowd. So I, it's so funny. I didn't even read this article and I bring that up and then he does the same thing. Here's yeah. She. And, I didn't know if it was a she. It might be and a she. there, uh, let me see. It is uh, Daryl Austin. Okay, so it's a he. So um, here's here's the thing too. It's changed so much just in the last 10 years. I mean, we did the, the Halloween parties. They were not overbooked like they are now. Um, the parks in general were not, even though the prices were lower, they didn't feel as crowded as mm -hmm. they have been. I mean, Disney is basically trying to shove as many people into the parks as possible. Um, again, it's all about getting more blood out of the rock. They they use the parks to bankroll the rest of the company and they bet heavy, they bet everything on Star Wars and it, it failed. It failed. It, yeah, it did. Because they made so many bad choices with this. <sighs> and, uh, you know, I, I get, you know, it's so funny because they're like, it wasn't the news anyone was expecting with the, the park... Uh, attendance decreasing 
in response to the most hotly anticipated theme park happening in the past decade? I don't think it was. I don't either. I think more people were excited about Harry Potter. More people are excited definitely about Nintendo mm -hmm. than they are about Star Wars. Disney, frankly, has destroyed the Star Wars brand. Yeah, a few years ago, people have been all about it. You, yeah. It's been ruined. People just, they, I mean, as much as they try to say, nah, -uh, you're just haters. I know it's a lot of media. Have you noticed this? Lately, they're not being like straight up, everybody's just trolls now. They're being like, well, there are some, you know, it's probably true that there's a lot of people who don't like it, but the ones that are, go too far are the trolls. And it used to be that if you didn't like it, you were a troll. Have you or noticed that? Have yeah. you noticed that? And now it's been like, well, there's a lot of fans who don't like it, but there are, but then there's a lot that go too far. So now they're at least admitting that, you know. There's a problem. At least mm -hmm. they're admitting there's a problem. Before, I think they thought they were going to get their Mickey shaped uh, cookie mm -hmm. from Disney if they played ball and they get access. And now it's like, I think they're going to cut back on the access anyway because they can't afford to be given out all kinds of free tickets mm -hmm. and That's stuff. Because what's happen. Uh, now, IGN. IGN, Galaxy's Edge, uh, they built a $200 lightsaber, but they were angry because their kid couldn't carry it around the park. They had to they had to keep it in a case. I don't, okay, I'm going to say on this one, I don't disagree with Disney on this because, um, first of all, it's a she, yeah. Anyway, she wanted to go, you know, tried to get noticed, um, but the lightsaber, they probably wanted to keep them in the case because they wanted they could get, you could get hurt. Two, mm -hmm. um, it could break. But mostly I think it's because People will go around, you know, fighting with these dang things in front of the Falcon and somebody's going to get hurt. I mean, I've been there at, at the one, the kids version of the Build Your Own Lightsaber, and I've almost got creamed by kids many, many times because their parents weren't watching. They decided to have a lightsaber battle right in front of my face. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I can kind of get it, but it's like, what a failure. Like, you build a Star Wars land and you can't really cosplay in the Star Wars land. They no. don't have enough cast members or aliens or whatever. All that, all the really crazy interactive stuff they were going to do. They're holding it back. They're putting it in the hotel. You're not even allowed to walk around with the damn lightsaber you paid $200 for. What is the point? Right. I mean, what is the point of this? Well, as I said, they said that it was start they were carrying it around. No one noticed, but then yeah. when it started to glow at night, um, they came over and said the one they, they were doing their in, in character you know, oh, they were like, uh, what'd they say? In it's character. illegal. It's, it's illegal. illegal. Have a lightsaber. And then the other one came over and explained it. They said, explain it to him and help him put it in the case. I'm just like, but then the flip side is, I will, I'm going to give Disney a pass on this one because, um, yeah, this is it. They don't want to break out to spontaneous lightsabers. And you know damn well people are going to do that. Yeah, I get it. But lightsabers are there. Pe Falcon's there. It's going to happen. I mean, it sounded like a good idea on paper that they were like, oh, yeah, it's you're going to live your Star Wars story. There is no Star Wars story to be lived at Galaxy's Edge. Your story is you go, you stand in line, you get on a half-assed ride. You, you fork out $200 for a lightsaber. Fork out $200 for a lightsaber you can't even use. Uh, and then go build you, a droid if you want. That you probably aren't allowed to use either because it might trip somebody. Yeah, I mean... You're supposed to be living your Star Wars. If you actually want to live a Star Wars story, you got to shell out three thousand dollars plus to go on the space cruiser, which I think is a really ill-conceived idea. And I have to wonder if Disney World's Galaxy's Edge doesn't perform, if they're going to pull the plug on that, because what is the point? If people yeah. won't even go to the regular the, the regular Star Wars lands, they're not going to shell out three thousand dollars to go to the super deluxe Star yeah, Wars hotel. Yeah, that was just you know, yeah. It's stupid. It's just very dumb. Very bad uh, look for Disney right now. And yeah, it's you know, this is where Star Wars is. I don't know why it's so hard for them to to get this. People don't like the direction Star Wars is going in. I'm not saying everybody, but the the vast majority of people, Star Wars doesn't mean as much as it used to. Mm -mm. And what the people who still loved it, they they might still like the classic ones, but they're like, mm-mm. I mean, yep. and even like the Force Awakens, the Last Jedi kind of you know cemented it for a lot of people. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but you know, I was gonna say real quick because uh, you're wrapping this up in a minute, right? Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say real quick though because we inevitably always get the commenters that you just hate Disney. You just like to go out there and do negative stories about Disney. I have done plenty of positive stories about Disney. I used to do a Disney blog. I have my own Disney blog. I do plenty of positive stories about Disney. There are still a lot of things about Disney I do like. However. There's a lot of stuff about Disney I don't think's right. And I'm not going to not say anything about it just because some people will think you can't say anything bad about Disney or you're negative. It's like, no, this goes up along with the video we just did earlier on animation. Mm. This whole idea that you cannot criticize anything or you're just you're just a hater or you're just a troll, you're just a, you know, toxic person is bullshit. 
Yes, I said shit in a Disney video. Because it's <laughs> bull. Because it's like, you know what? The, people need to do better. Disney wants, you want Disney to succeed? Tell them what they're doing wrong so they can fix it. The problem is Disney isn't listening to what people are telling them. They used to. They used to. They used to. It was like a, everybody knew if you wouldn't send anything to customer service, it would get fixed. It would get taken yeah. care of. And now they are they don't know what the heck's doing. they're doing. But I'm just saying, you know, if something's good, I will say something's good. Their merchandise is on point. Man, they have the Scrooge McDuck Lounge Flight Backpack. Mm. They have their Alex Nani bracelets and spirit jerseys. Hell yeah. But then when they go and do shit like this, I'm going to say, look, guys, no. Yeah. And Disney's not used to hearing no. Disney's not used to hearing bad news. They've been winning for too long. Uh, they've gotten numb to uh, adversity. They've gotten numb to pushback. You know, they own everything. Uh, they don't feel like they have to listen to consumers anymore. Seriously, though, that lounge play backpack's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I'm just, I'm just saying. That was so a I'll give them. There's a purse and a backpack. The purse has a nephew. So the backpack has Uncle Scrooge. Oh. So you know, keep that up. That's good. This stuff's not good. And the prices on those are a little high, but still. Yeah, prices on everything are a little high. So I just think people are burnt out. I think they're burnt out. I think it's you know Disney's not delivering like they used to. Like I said, I think people are more excited about what Universal's going to do because they don't know what to expect. You know, mm -hmm. Disney is like they kind of know what to expect now. Uh, and this was their big. This was their big reveal. Uh, but Universal, we don't know what's coming no, exactly said. to this other park, and and they've really been heard ramp rumors. Yeah, they've been ramping it up. So uh, I am at this point uh, infinitely more excited about Epic Universe than I am uh, anything coming out of Disney. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> you know, just because I'm afraid they're going to space, ruin Spaceship Earth. That's they're what, that, they're going to so ruin Earth. Spaceship Earth. They're going to ruin it. That's going to that you know, you you never heard a rant like you're going to hear if they ruin Spaceship Earth. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're going to wrap this one up. We'll keep an eye on the Disney World version of Galaxy's Edge, and I know we're going to get people. They're going to be like, "Oh my God, I saw videos opening day and it was crowded." Yes, it was. You know, we what? have video on our own our own Facebook page for our our uh, Disney site. Yeah, if uh, piratesandprincesses.net, we actually have a live stream from opening day from our friends who were down there opening day. And yes, in the morning, it was busy. But you know what? Every new attraction is crazy busy. Even uh, I was there opening day at Toy Story Land. The line went clear back to the very, very clear back to the sci-fi uh, dine-in, uh, drive-in. And, uh, you know, but those crowds eventually kind of thinned mm -hmm. out and normalized a little bit. And and that's same. Like I said, we had friends there in the morning where it was crazy His busy. Friends are in the evening. And then by nighttime, it was less than an hour to get through yeah. on opening day. That's not good. Mm -mm. I don't care how, uh, you know, Chapek and Iger try to spin it. It's not good. It's not crowd control. It's, there is a lack of interest and lack of crowds. Yeah. It's because we're so good at our job. We're so, we're so good. That you won't even notice the crowds because they're not there. I know, right? It's like crowds are invisible. Yeah, look at, all the, look at all the crowds. It's like the emperor's new clothes. Look at that amazing ensemble. Isn't that glorious? He's naked. Look at those crowds. Aren't they stunning? There's nobody here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's going to be really interesting to see where Disney is uh, at the end of September. End of September is the end of their fiscal year. If heads are going to roll and things are going to change, it's going to happen then. You know, just cut the regular cast members who are the ones who do all the work yeah, and make it magical. They'll, they're the ones who get cut. The people that you like, people who go all the extra mile for you and love their job and just do it because they want to help and they want, they love to see smiles. Those who will be cut. Yeah. Uh, 10 to 1. So, yeah. And, that's, and the prices will go up. Yeah. And that's what's Parking sad. Parking will go up. Yep. The, you'll, we're waiting for them to start charging for the bathrooms. Give them time. They'll have a bathroom fast pass. That's plus right. Park, you can pay yeah. like 20 bucks a day and have a bathroom fast pass. Unlimited bathroom visits. If not, you get you know two per person. Per no, day. it'll be like you get a special bathroom. Like there's a special bathroom built. Like you you can use <laughs> DVC you can bathroom. Only use the deal the tangled bathrooms if you have the fast pass. The the DPC the Disney Potty Club. <laughs> yes. Uh, for twenty thousand dollars, you can use the bathrooms anywhere in the park as often as you want to. And you don't have to pay extra, but you might want to tip the bathroom attendant. That's right. It's like their meal plan. Meal plan sounds like a great deal until you spend like five hundred dollars for a meal. Well, it wasn't that much, but you could spend two fifty for a character meal, depending on people you oh, have. Oh yeah. And then Easy. you have to tip on top of it. Yeah. Because they don't pay their people enough apparently. And if you have more than six people, I think they charge eighteen percent. Right and here's the of... thing: people that come from other countries, uh, the other countries don't do tips. Their their people are just paid fairly, and they don't probably even know to tip. 
<sighs> and the last couple times we've been there, the waiters and waitresses have actually said, you know, oh, hey, if you want to leave me a tip. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Let me stand here and, and, and watch and see what dollar amount you put down. That being on said, your... we always do tip. Yeah, uh, but, just tip. Because these people, God knows, are not getting paid I was just enough. Like, <laughs> I know. I was just like, okay. But we always tip, so. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay, okay so. Okay, it went longer in 15 minutes. Yeah, it went a little bit longer, but there's a lot to talk about. So please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. We'll keep an eye on Galaxy's Edge and Disney World. And we'll see if the attendance picks up any in Disneyland. But right now, it's not looking too, not looking too good. Mm -mm. All right. See you guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.